Hey guys, it's May May, and today we're looking at the Works All-in-One Tool from We Are Memory Keepers. Now, this is not a sponsored video. This was this uh, tool was not gifted to me. I purchased this with my own money, and I did get some to put in the store for you guys. But I want to encourage you to watch till the end because I try out this stamping platform in the beginning, and I have some hiccups, but in the end, I learned how to use it a little better. So stick around to the end to see that. And here we go. I'm going to be testing every function in this video, so we're not wasting any time. Let's jump into it. If you've not seen this tool, it's a tool that does many, many things. Matter of fact, let me tell you what all it will do. It says combines over a dozen must-have tools into one. It will do scoring, it will do envelopes, it will do tabs, it will do pennants, it will do tags, it will do stamping, it will do trimming, it will do hole punching, you name it. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through the book and just just try out each thing, but I'm going to start with stamping. And the reason is at our Craft Acropolis recently, this is the thing everybody wanted to know about. So we're going to start with stamping and test that out first. All right. So I've got my page open to tell me what to do. Let me remove the packaging so you can see the machine. Here it is machine, the tool. I'll probably say machine a thousand times. It's a tool. This is the stamping plate and it's magnetized at the top. Let me see if you can hear it. Yeah, it's magnetized and it's on a squish. It's on um, a spring. So here's what it says. Also, I want to tell you really quick, I do not want this book to intimidate you, okay? It shows all of this wording under each step. You only need to pay attention to the one that is written in your language, all right? So the only one we're paying attention to for me is this first line in English. Flip alignment guide so raised edge is aligned with the zero mark. So let me show you what that is. I glanced at this earlier because I'm like, what's the alignment guide? Well, this guy comes out, okay? So depending on what tool you're using, you have to place this the way it goes, all right? So this is the alignment guide it's talking about. See how it has this lip? You can kind of see it there. You want to place that so that it has the alignment guide here at zero, all right? Without that, when you go to line something up, it would just slide over the bar. So I'm going to put these back for a second. I want this to work so bad. I really do. Okay, <laughs> then um, it says optional. If stamping on thin paper, use cardstock under paper to avoid ridges. This is so key for me because that is the thing I was most concerned about is that this guy would leave these ridges in my image. Let me find a stamp that has a good solid background. So the stamp I'm going to use is this guy. I feel like that gives me a lot of solid area to see if the grooves are going to show through. This is from our layered row set. So this is the one I want to use. And the next step for us here is position project by aligning it with the edge of alignment guide. It says secure project with magnets. Okay, cool. Let me show you this. So if we flip this guy over, does that sit? It does sit. I like that. I can close this while using the stamping platform. If you flip this over, look at the magnets and look what they did. Y'all know how I am about adding like tape and stuff to my magnets. I don't like to do that. They put these little handles. I love those handles. That really, really, really makes me happy. Okay, so let's get some paper. So I'm going to start with a thin, fairly thin cardstock. This is not a very heavyweight cardstock. It's probably the lightest weight we would be using in stamping anyway. And I'm going to place this against that guide like it suggests, okay? And then I'll use the top here to help me line it up. This means I can place my stamp where I want it on the page, okay? Then it tells me, I'm a little bit um, spread it. Let's put the magnets down to hold it in place. Wow, okay, those really hold. Oh, look, these also can fold up. So making grabbing them super easy. Look at that. Those little tabs fold. Okay, will it work on both sides? It does. These are pretty strong magnets too. I love that. So I've got those in place. Then it says, place stamp where desired on project, place stamping plate on the project and press straight down to adhere the stamp. So that makes sense. It's just like we do with our other positioning tools. Oh, okay. So I have this upside down and it's pushing the magnets away. So that'll help me know if I always have it correct. So there we go. So I can sit that down and now I can press and pick up my stamp. Now, I always like to do this. This is not a tool thing. They're not telling me to do this, but I always like to make sure I don't have any air bubbles in these solid image stamps like this. And then I'm just gonna recheck that since I lifted that up. All right, then it says, remove the stamping plate, apply ink and stamp project. So let's do it. Now my favorite ink, especially for solid images, is VersaFine Onyx Black. So I'm gonna be fair and use what I would normally use. 
I'm sure I could use a different ink and get a different result, but this is the one I use all the time. So there's that. I've inked it up really well. Bring this back over where you can see what we're doing. I'm gonna magnet that down into place. That's really sturdy, actually. And then I'm gonna press this down. Now, just like I would with anything, I'm holding this down and I'm gonna use my thumb to go over and get that pressure in there and get that nice and even. And when I lift that up, aha, now look at that. So I have ink in the middle. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna see, did I have an air bubble? And I don't feel an air bubble in there, okay? So I'm gonna try that again. And I tell you what I'll do, I'll re-ink it and go right back. Maybe it was me. It's the first time I've ever stamped with it. Sometimes there's a learning curve. And a lot of you guys don't realize that. Sometimes there is a learning curve. Look at my dirty finger. I better clean that or we'll have a mistake in a minute. Okay, clean my finger and now let's press this down again, okay? And this time I'm gonna concentrate on that center. So I'm gonna press it with the heel of my hand. I've been known to do that with my other positioner, so that's not unusual. So pressing with the heel and now let's lift that up and I'm still not getting that middle. Okay, let's try this. Let's move the stamp around. I also wanna feel, ooh, I let my magnets clap. You're not supposed to do that, we'll put them like that. I also wanna feel under here and see why that's causing me that issue. So let's move the stamp to another spot and see if we get a better result. This was the thing I was worried about, okay? And it could be me, so I'm gonna try it in lots of places and see if we can change this out, make this work a little better, and again, there can be a learning curve. Let's go up here to this top corner and let's do just what they suggested, which was to pick this up with our platform. Let's pick that up. Now it's gonna leave some behind because I'm using a dirty stamp. Oh look, the middle did that time. Okay, hold on, let's ink it. All right, let's magnet it, sit it down, press it. I've got ink everywhere already. And let's see, that is much better, much better. So in that corner, I'm getting a better result. I can still see some ink left on my stamp. So I know that, you know, the stamp works. We've got in that area. Let's do it again and see if we can pick up that little ink right there. I'm gonna press down on it and lift that up. It's better. It's not a super consistent result because I want it to be consistent, you know, all across the board. Let's try it in another spot. And this time I'm gonna clean the stamp off and let's look at it one more time. All right, so pick these guys up. And I wanted to see this too. I wanted to see if the board is magnet all over the front. Oh, I got ink on it. Let me clean that off. That'll drive me insane. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to see if, where the magnets work and where they don't work. So they work up here. So all of this is working. Where does that stop? Okay, this must be where it stops because that means underneath here, yep. So that is where the magnets start. Can we see that underneath? Let me look. No, but I'm assuming it's this section in here where the magnets are because that seems to be where it's sticking. All right, let's try our image, our stamp in another spot. So I'm gonna sit these here like so. Let me trim my paper down a little. And I'm gonna place this here. Let's put the stamp down here a little lower and see what we get. So down there, let's place our positioner, pick it up. I could have used the magnet, I mean the uh, magnets on there. Let's stick one on there just to have it. Put one in here. All right, let's ink this guy up. Looks like it's good and covered. I got ink everywhere, let's clean that off. All right, let's go back to it. So magnet. Stick that down, press this down, and I'm gonna give it a good press this time. I really want this to work, y'all. I really do. I'm gonna press this down, press this down, lift it up, and I'm still getting that. Okay, let's do this. As a control, let's stamp this without the pad and make sure the stamp is working correctly, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna keep this in the screen for you guys to see. I'm gonna ink this up. And I'm gonna use it on this tray. I know this is not ideal, but we're just gonna make sure this stamp is working correctly. So I'm gonna press this down like so. And on my regular work surface, I'm gonna give it the same kind of press, get in there and see if it's working. It's not the stamp, cause there it is, it's working fine. So this is what I was concerned about. Let's go back to it. I'm cleaning the stamp off again and I'm kind of at a loss. I really want this to work. So I'm gonna try again. Let's get, let, okay, 
let's do it with a different stamp. Let's do it with one that's not so solid. We all have trouble with solid image stamps. Let's see what it does with sentiments. Maybe this is just not the tool for doing with solid images. So let's try a sentiment real quick. So same card stock, so you guys can see it really good for one thing. I'll line that up like so. I'll magnet that down. This is the other piece of the cardstock. This word says celebrate, and I'm kind of using solid and not solid. So we've got a pretty solid image there, but it's also just script. So I'm gonna place this down and pick up our stamp. And then as always, even in other positioning tools, I always make sure I don't have an air bubble anywhere. So I'm just press that down and now let's ink it. I'm gonna lay it to the side to ink it. And then it's funny because what I was mostly concerned about was having the lines from the scoring board show through, but now it looks like I am should be concerned about uneven stamping surface. So let's do this thing. This is kind of where our rose was in the beginning. Let's try this one. So I'm gonna press, 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 just like so. I'm gonna put my heel in it, <laughs> put the heel of my hand in it and lift. Now that's not terrible. There is some ink left. Can you see that ink that's left on the stamp right there in the middle, especially in this area? And you can see here, it's a little um, light in the middle. So as that control again, I'm going to stamp this without the positioner and see if we get a solid image. So moving the positioner side, bring our paper over, re-ink, or maybe, you know what? I'm not gonna re-ink. Let's see how much ink we pick up from here. So I'm gonna place this down. This is not how you're supposed to use this. I just wanna see if I can pick up that ink in the center um, on a flat surface. So, sorta, got pretty good bit. Do I have an air bubble? Hmm, there might could have been an air bubble in there. Let's try it again. I'm telling y'all, I'm giving this a good old college try. I really, really, really want this to work. I love the idea of this all-in-one tool especially for us stampers and like when we go to crops, it's so cool for that, but I got to make sure that it's going to work, right? Okay, so here we go. Let's ink this guy up. And then clean up what I made a mess of and then put this guy down. All right, we're going to try it again. Did I have it? I think I'm going to stand up because you could stand up at home, right? I'm going to stand up. I'm going to press that center really good and then get those edges. All right, let's see. That was much, much better. Maybe I had a bubble in there. I don't know, um, but that's much better. And I'm not seeing any of the lines underneath. Let me show you. That was a concern before that you might see the lines and I'm not seeing any lines in there. So I don't think that's an issue. This is from where I stamped on the back there. Clean that up. So I'm gonna say, <laughs> maybe for sentiments and things like this, let's try it with a fine line sentiment. Okay, for continuity sake, I'm gonna use the same cardstock. I just cut a piece off. I'll put that magnet there and I'm going to use a little sentiment that's um, from Birdie Says Stamp Set. It's just a little scripty sentiment. Let's put that right there and then let's pick it up with the magnet platform. So pick that little guy up, put that back in place. Now let's ink it up. I'm so bad about picking up the ink pad and bringing it to the stamp. That's not the positioner's problem. That's me. <laughs> Okay, now let's see what it does with just a fine line sentiment. I'm just gonna do it just like I would with a regular block. And that is well done, that is perfect. So maybe I should have started here. <laughs> I still am concerned that the solid image stamps may give us a little grief. Solid image stamps are harder anyway, um, but I'm thinking it might give us a little grief on those, but it looks like we can use it for these kinds of things with no problem. So they're stamping. Now let me talk about, let's do some pros and cons. A pro is I love the process of the platform. I absolutely love the magnets. I think they're fantastic. They stick well. I love the spring formness. One of the things I really like about it is it's a super soft spring like this. It is not hard to press down. Like some of them can be kind of stiff. This one is not. This platform is fantastic. Look how thick this is. I really, really like that. Um, the grid is nice. 
it might get in my way a little bit because I'm not much on using grids, but if you like to use grids, there is a really nice grid. Um, okay, some cons. Cons are the solid image stamp. I feel like with these boards, it's very hard to get them perfectly flat. You know, they don't really touch the back. They don't really, oops, my magnets are coming off. They don't really touch the work surface except on the sides. And I think it's hard to get a nice flat surface for stamping. It worked perfectly fine for that um, fine line, but for this it didn't. And it's funny because the thing I was concerned about was these grids showing, not so much it not stamping. Love these feet. See how soft they are? Love those feet. Love, love, love <laughs> these magnets with the tabs. These are amazing. I love these. I'm going to put them on the back before I keep sticking them together. So they store back here. Love the storage of the magnets. That is great. And maybe another con for me, maybe not, is this mechanism where I have to change this. It's not the end of the world. You know, I'm not that lazy of a crafter. I'm pretty lazy, but I'm not that lazy. So changing that, remembering to do that will probably get in my way at some point, but not the end of the world. The biggest thing for me is that solid image stamping. And I may come back and try it again, but I just wanted to show you how stamping works. Other than that, um, I really like the feel of it. I want this to work so bad. I really do. All right, let's look at what else is in the book for us to try. I skipped straight to stamping, so let's go to the first page. So the first page is the trimmer. So let's see what we can learn about the trimmer together. All right, so the first thing we get is a warning. Blades are extremely sharp when exposed. The next thing we get is flip alignment guide so that the flat edge is aligned with zero. So let me show you what that means. All right, I'm gonna take this guy off. Oh, I wonder, is there a storage spot for this on the back? There's not. That would have been handy. Not, It's not a deal breaker, but that would have been handy if there was a storage space for it. So you're gonna have to keep up with this. We have to keep up with all of our acrylic blocks. That's not a deal breaker. Okay, so you wanna make sure that this guy is flat. Okay, so I put him back in position where he's nice and flat. Then it says, um, Align paper with desired measurement for precise cutting. Align paper to center of measurement groove. Center of measurement groove. What does that mean? <laughs> Hold on. For precise cutting, align paper to center of measurement groove. So is it telling me, uh, oh, I see what it's saying. Let's look. I think what it's telling me, probably shouldn't use white, but I just want to see how this works. I think it's telling me if I need three inches, Okay, if I need a three inch cut, then I'm gonna line my paper up to the center of that score groove. That would give me an accurate three inch. So I'm not lining it up directly to the line, I'm lining it up to the center of the groove, if that makes sense. Then the trimmer blade is here, and it is just a blade. I'll show you what that looks like. It is a blade on the edge there. How does that come off? I should read. <laughs> So let's try cutting a three inch piece. So line it up to the center and then cut. Now that blade was nice. That cut really, really nice. Does this blade have, yes. Okay, let me see how to get this off because I want to show you. It says replace blade by sliding off track and sliding on a new blade sold separately. So lift this up. You have to lift it up. Slide this off it says. Maybe I need to lift up and slide off. Maybe there's a stopper. There it is, okay. Okay, I feel better. That was a very easy movement. Okay, here's what happens. You push it to the end and then you lift slightly on the back and it comes right off. That's easy. And what I wanna show you, let me see if I can get this here to show you. I love that that blade is a double-sided blade, okay? So you can cut top and bottom just like we do with our other trimmer. I love that. Okay, I feel better about that. So that'll be easy to change. I like the arm. The arm feels sturdier than I thought it would be. And I think that's because of this kind of chunky construction right here. You see how thick that is? It's not that thick all the way across. This ruler section is pretty thin. So I do get a lot of wiggle there, but not as much as I expected to get. So I am happier about that. I do like this as well. This cut spot where the blade goes is very obvious. So if you were maybe wanting to cut this on a diagonal, it would be pretty easy to line up because you can see that line really well. So if you have any sight issues, it's real easy to see the line at the top and the bottom. So then you can sink your blade, go up and down. That's really nice. The cut is so nice, it's like butter. 
I don't know how long it'll last. I just got it. So I can't talk about blade life. I know a lot of you guys are wanting to know that. I don't know yet. All right, so that's trimming. The other thing you're all gonna wanna know, let's just look at it, measurements. Something I really do like is this. I do not have to open an arm out to do my basic card cutting. This is something we always talk about. Let's get an eight and a half by 11 piece. So here's an eight and a half by 11 piece of card stock. Let's make a card base. So if I go four and a quarter, remember I'm gonna split that groove. I'm gonna line up in the middle of that groove and do four and a quarter. I do not have to open my um, trimmer at all, no arm. Let's say I wanted to do it at five and a half. So I wanted to do this kind. Five and a half is here. Now look, the measurements go around this little guy. Can you see that? They're still very easily read, but they do drop down there. But look, I don't have to open it to cut a five and a half. And let's say I wanna cut six inches. I do not have to open it to cut six inches. That is a bonus for me. I love that. I do not like having to open the arm to get past a certain um, size in card making. I understand it when we're doing bigger pieces, but I don't have to open it and that makes me happy. Now let's look at what happens when we do open the arm. So if we come this way, let's see what we get here. So we get, it's a nice sturdy arm. I'll tell you that, I like how there's no wiggle. I like that underneath is flat all the way down. See that? So it's not, oops, I got a little too, um, little too blurry up here. See how it's thick right here? So that all sits flat on the surface. That's good because you know with some trimmers we get that kind of wiggle arm out there. So I really like that. And this guy measures out to 14 inches. So that's really good too. Um, I really like how sturdy that arm is. Not too hard either. Not too hard to do that. Um, I noticed this. It went up when I did that. There's a groove that it slides into. So you want to make sure you do that. So I think that's the trimmer. There is a ruler here on this arm to help you out. There's a ruler there. So I think that's pretty much all of the trimmer. Let's look and see if they say anything I didn't notice. All right, the next thing, it says flip alignment guide. Oh, this is for scoring, okay. So let's move on to scoring. Flip alignment guide, so raised edge is aligned with the zero mark. So we're back to our little tool in here. We wanna flip this up so that the raised edge is at the zero mark. And this is the zero mark, by the way. Then it says, Align paper with edge, align paper with edge alignment guide. So, okay, let me show you. This is this is a thing. You are gonna have to, so say you're making something, you're scoring a whole sheet of paper or a 12 by 12, you are gonna have to open the arm. That's not a deal breaker. I mean, if we're, our 12 by 12 scoreboard takes up this much space too, but this is a lot less for storing, right? So there's that, so then you place this in here. Now, one thing I'm noticing, is this is only a mini scoreboard. So let me show you what I mean by that. This is, let me get it. <laughs> I wanna get their um, mini. This is We Are's mini, okay? So basically, you're getting a mini scoreboard. I thought we were getting a full size. I don't know why I thought that, but I did. So you're getting from one inch to six and an eighth of scoring room. So to score, I know they'll have a tool. Here it is at the bottom, let me show you. It's right here, here's a tool tucked in, and this is how we will score. So I will tell you this, they had another tool like this before that I reviewed, and I didn't love how wiggly the base was. This one seems to sit pretty flat and pretty straight, so that's good. So to score, oh, I like this too. They didn't give us that super point, they gave us that kind of bevel point. I like that. Now, as you know, I wouldn't use this. I'd use my regular bone folder, but let's test it. So let's do one inch. That seems to be fine. One inch. Let's do three inches. Seems to be fine. The scoreboard seems to be just like any other scoreboard. Um, again, just remember, it's the mini size. You get the length, but you only get that much width unless I'm missing something, but that's all I see there. All right, let's see if we did all the instructions on that one. That's everything there. All right, let's see what the next thing is. Hmm, envelope maker. So select the card size, select the card size and trim paper to the correct size. So I think I need to pull out the envelope guide first. All right, so if I'm gonna trim paper, I need to flip this over. Okay, so let's do that because we are gonna trim paper. I'm gonna get out the guide. I'm afraid of this guy, let me close it down, okay. I'm gonna get out my little envelope guide. Oh, it slides out the top, just like so. Oh, magnets, I like that. Oh, two magnets, look at that. Okay, let's test out the envelope maker. Now, I started to test it out a moment ago when I realized 
that I cannot find an A2 size card on here. So let me show you what we're working with. I'm gonna zoom in. So I was looking for the card size four and a quarter by five and a half, and I can't find it on there. I took this up front to let the girls look to see if I was missing it, and they don't see it either, okay? So what I'm wondering is, is this four by five and a half possibly a typo, and does this one actually fit an A2 size card? So that's what we're gonna try. That could be the case. That might should be our A2 size card, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my little book here to give me directions and we're gonna do what it says. So step number one says to line the envelope arrow with the envelope mark on the board, okay? So I'm gonna line that envelope arrow up and what happens is these little teeth, there's little teeth up here, they line up into those grooves so this can stay flush, see that? So that's what we're doing. I'm lining it up right there to the envelope side, okay? Then it says, align the envelope guide. I did that. Okay. Align the left edge of the paper to the alignment guide measurement from the chart and score at the two inch mark. So if I go to my alignment guide measurement and I come down to this one we're trying, it says three and one fourth. Okay. So what I do here is I line this paper up to the three and one fourth mark, just like this, and score at two inches. Here's the two inch, which is where my tag or where my little envelope um, tool is sitting. So I score it right here. Now it says, turn it 90 degrees or rotate paper 90 degrees clockwise. So that means this score mark is now gonna turn in this direction, okay? Then it says, align score mark, align score mark with score guide. Okay, here's your score guide. So now what you're doing is you're lining up that score mark with that score guide. Okay. And then what does it say? Score and repeat. Okay. So now I will score it. Oops. <laughs> so do I score from the score guide? Nope. In the picture, it shows me scoring from the edge. Okay. So I'm going to score from the edge like the picture shows. So I'm going to come right here and score. I think that's what gives us the overlap for the little envelope to for the little punch to do. All right, then it says repeat four, repeat steps four and five. So step four is rotate 90 degrees, line up our score mark at the score guide, and then step five is to score. And then it says turn it. Okay, this is working, this is making sense. Line it up with the score and then score. So the thing is this, all you do at first is you just do your first mark here. After that, you use the score guide. That's not hard at all. Okay, so now it says, align score mark with envelope punch and punch. You see the little envelope punch has the little caption bubble? So we've seen that before. We're gonna do that this time too. All right, so here's the envelope punch with the little caption bubble. So now what I do is I line up the score mark and I'm looking at the picture to see. So the caption bubble runs up our score mark line. Okay, so I'm gonna line that up and punch, so that's good. That works right at our little scores. There you go. Then I'm assuming, and I better not assume, I'm gonna look and make sure, but I think I do that everywhere they cross up. Let me read the next step. Rotate paper 90 degrees, align score line again and punch, and repeat step seven for the remaining two sides, so yes. So I'm gonna keep going. So rotate, line up, rotate, line up, Okay, and punch. So that's what we've got. That's good, that's what we want. The next thing it says to do is to align paper corner with the corner rounder and punch. So which one's the corner rounder? Let me see. Oh, interesting. The corner rounder is on the inside of your envelope punch, so that's cool. So we're gonna line this up in there, just like so, and punch. Cool, that rounded that corner. And then I'm gonna do the other corner. Okay, this looks like every other envelope I've ever made with a punch board. We're getting there. Okay, then it says, oh, there's another something. Oh no, that was right. No, then it says rotate and repeat for remaining sides. Oh, so it does every, okay. Let's do every one, my bad. Do every corner with our punch. Cool beans, okay. Now we can fold this and assemble our envelope. We can get rid of our little trash here. 
Now let's use our little bone folder. So we're gonna fold this in and close. I'm gonna fold this side in. I'm doing what the picture says and then crease. Then I'm gonna fold this side up and crease. Now what I'm gonna do is take a little glue and close our envelope up. I wanna see if this is our A2 envelope. It's feeling like it might be actually. So a little glue like so and then close our envelope. And now let me get an A2 size card and see if it fits. So this is the card Vince made for the challenge. Let's see if it fits in here. It fits perfectly. So my theory was right. It is just, it's either meant to be or it's a misprint. I do not know. Let me bring this back over and show you. So the four by five and a half is the right one for an A2 card. Now it's tight, okay? It just fits. So if you had a little dimension on your card, you might struggle a little bit getting that in there, but that fits if you need an A2. Um, you probably could size up to maybe four and a half by five and a half because the cardstock only moves slightly. So instead of doing seven and a half by seven and a half inch square, you do a seven and seven eight square. So you probably could move up to that if you needed a little more space. But there you go. That's how you use the envelope maker. It works. It's not extremely hard. You will need to play with it. Now that I have, I could put together an envelope super easy. All right, let's see what's next. Okay, let's make a tab. So it says for side tabs, align paper to the side tab mark and punch. So this is not telling me what size paper I need to do. Apparently I can do any size I want. So let's do it. I'm just gonna use scraps. So I'm gonna keep using what I got. So here's how we do a tab. So it says, for side tabs, align paper to side tab mark and punch. So, which one is the side tab? Oh, here we go. Let me turn this where I can read it real quick. So this one is the tab punch, okay? So it says to align the paper to the side and punch. That's where you start, okay? That's easy enough. That's how we do with most tabs or with our other tab maker. Then, and I can see this here, you might not can. There are three little spots, small, medium, and large. So then it looks as though I can turn this around and line it up. Let's make a large tab. So I'm gonna go all the way to the end and let me read the instructions. <laughs> okay, so I did step one. I'm gonna skip this one. We'll do that one in a second. That's if I wanna make a center tab. I'm gonna make an edge tab. So here what you do is you'll line up with whatever size tab you want and we're making a large one. So you can see how I did that there. I've got that cut. And then it says to come to your trimmer, okay? align this into your trimmer where that tab meets the cut edge. Place your blade down. You can see where it's at because you have a little line guide and then slice, okay? So that then makes our tabs. You can see that there. Let's make a center tab on this end and see the difference. All right, so I'm get rid of this. And here's what it said about the center tab. Let's say you wanted your tab um, Let's just go here. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna punch it in this area, okay? And then what you would do is you would flip this over and put it to where you want it, small, medium, or large. Let's do another large, like so, okay? So now I need to trim two sides away. So not hard, this is pretty easy. You'd have to do your measuring, it looks like, you know, on your own, because there's not like a specific measure for this in there. But I mean, I think you can know what size you want your tabs to be. So I'll cut one edge off. There's that one. Then let's go to the top. And I'm just using that little line that goes down the trimmer to help me line this up. So I want it here and trim that off. That seems to be doing just fine. And there is my middle tab. Now it looks like I could have slid up a little bit more and got a little more of that off of there. Looks like I hung back a little far, maybe being safe. Let's try it again. Yeah, that feels better. I got it down in there better that time. So I think that's more a clean tab there. Let's look on this side, see how much cleaner that is. Okay, so that's the tab maker. Pretty simple, pretty easy go in there. Let's see what the next thing is on our list or in the book. The tag, okay, this is the one everybody loves. So let's make a tag together. So I'm just gonna cut this paper to any old size. Let's do a four and a half, four and a half inch tag. Okay, so here's this. What it says to do first, trim paper to desired tag size, I did. Then it says place tag under hole punch, align with centering lines and punch. So that is gonna be this guy right here. 
and let me turn it again where I can see it. So it looks like you work with this on the side almost as much as you do on the front up there. So here's my little area. So if I want to line this guy up, I got it a little too big. Let me trim it down because this only goes to three inches on either side. So let me trim this down just a little bit, trim it to three inches. There we go. A three inch tag is plenty big enough for me. I usually stay somewhere in there. All right, and then you just line this up so that it's centered in those little lines that are here for you, the little guidelines, and then punch. That gets you your hole for your tag. And then it says, align the tag guide to the tag indicator. Okay, so we need our guide back out. And our guide is right in here. Let's turn this around this way. Okay, for the tag, what you do is you line the tag guide up with the tag spot on the scoreboard there. So I'm gonna line that in just like we did with the envelope maker, all right? Then it says, align the tag, and then it says, align paper to desired measurement on the tag guide and trim. So let me see what my desired measurement is. So if I put it at one inch, that's too much because see what's overlapping? I'm gonna bring this down and I think I'll do it at two inches. I'm just doing it by eye here, trying to decide what kind of angle I want. So I'm gonna do that at two inches and see what that looks like. So there is that. So there's a two inch um, spot. That means if I flip this over, I wanna line my card up at the two inch, my tag up at the two inch mark again. Now let me show you something that I really like and I'm very, very happy they did this. Do you see the two inches over here? But once I cut off that little triangle, I have to be way out here to measure it up. Look what they did. They added grooves here to help me line that up. That is perfect. So now I can cut that at the two inch mark and my tag will be right. That's super cool. So is that the end of that? Yes, that's what it tells me to do there. But you know what else we can do because we have it, why not? Let's round the corners. Let's use all of our tool, right? <laughs> look how cute this is. I love making tags. They're my favorite. So look how good that looks. Super easy. I like the tag option. What's next? Let's flip the page and see what's next. Next is the pom-pom maker. Now I don't have, yes I do, I have yarn. I'm gonna have to go look for some yarn. I'll be right back. So I found some yarn. Let's make a pom-pom. All right, so I'm going to put this little guy away. I think he goes like this. Nope, <laughs> flip him over, put him in this way. There we go, okay. So this says, insert two pegs Distance between pegs will determine the size of pom-pom. So insert two pegs. Now let me show you this. This is kind of cool. Look right here. This is where the pegs are. So you pull these guys out and then you insert them. I'm gonna flip this guy around. You insert them at the top. I'm gonna turn this sideways so I can work with it. Oh, I got some little hole punch things there. Okay. Oh, look, I discovered something by accident. Look, you actually have four pegs. So I'm just gonna leave them together so I don't lose them. I don't think that'll matter. It might matter, we'll see. All right, it says the distance between the pegs will determine the size of the pom-pom. Since we're just doing this as a sample, I'm not gonna make a huge pom-pom because I don't wanna have to wrap for a really long time. I'm gonna take these out and can I put them back in by themselves? I don't know, let's just see what happens. I don't think so. I'm gonna leave them out because I don't wanna take a chance of pushing them down in there and not being able to get them out. So I'm just gonna sit them over there for now. All right, the first thing it says, make a knot around the bottom peg. Okay, so this bottom peg, and I'm just gonna make a little knot off the peg and then slide it on like that. Okay, and it said a knot. Does it mean a knot? I think we can do it just like that. I don't think we need a knot knot. All right, then it says, wrap right strand around pegs. Amount of wraps determines the fullness. Wrap right strand. So that means I go here and I wrap. Now I'm not doing it super, super tight because you know with pom-poms you want them to be kind of fluffy, but I guess you want to keep a consistent um, tension, which is my problem with crochet. That's why I can't crochet because I cannot keep my yarn uh, tension very consistent. Okay, this probably won't be the best pom-pom anyone's ever made, but it'll let us see what it's how it works. So then it says, cut a six to eight inch piece of yarn and wrap around the center and double knot. All right, let me cut that. So I'm gonna cut this guy away here and then what it says is to kind of go underneath. Let me lift that up a little bit so I can get my yarn underneath there. Okay, then it says double knot in the middle. 
So having those two pegs will let you get even bigger. You know, if you needed to make an even bigger pom-pom, you could get taller, make it fuller. And remember, the length that I've done here determine, you know, the, the, let me try that word again. The length, the difference between the pegs is what determines the size of your little pom-pom. Those scissors are not working for the yarn today. Let's try these. Okay. And then I'm gonna trim this one off here. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim this one away down here. Now it says, cut the ends on top and bottom and trim off knots, fluff and trim as desired. Okay, so that means I can take this off of the pegs. So I'm through with that. And now I just wanna stick my scissors up in there and cut them apart. Make sure I get them all. I think I missed a couple right there. Okay, and then let's do the other end. This is pretty self-explanatory, right? If you've ever made a pom-pom, this is pretty much the process. I'm gonna get that piece out because it doesn't make any sense. There we go. Now, it also says trim as desired. This one would need a haircut in places, and I think I still need more yarn, but you get the idea of the process of that. That works really cool to be able to make your pom-pom like that. So that is the pom-pom maker. Now let's look at a tassel maker. Tassel looks like it works pretty similar. So this says insert three pegs, all right? So peg number one determines the top of the tassel. So what I'll do is I'll insert it into slot number one, okay? And then it says two and three determine the length. So I'm kind of looking at what they've done to see if I can kind of mimic it. So I'm gonna go here and then I need another peg for the length. So let's not make it too long. Let's go about like that. Then it says make a knot and place on the third peg. So that's gonna be this guy here. So let's do that. So we will make a knot and place on the third peg. There we go. Then it says, wrap right strand around pegs. Amount of wraps determines fullness of tassel. And then tie a knot around the bottom peg. All right, so I wrap the whole set of pegs like so. That's probably way more than I need. So we'll do that. And then it says, cut a six to eight inch piece of yarn. So let's do that as well. And here it says, wrap around tassel below second peg and double knot. Oh, I see. I'm moving this up. <laughs> I put it too far. I think right next to each other is more what I want. So I'm gonna slide these up a little bit so I can get my yarn underneath. Okay, and I'm just gonna feed this under like so, and then tie that, pulling it snug. Okay, so then I'm gonna leave that hanging, it won't hurt anything. Then it says, lift the tassel from the pegs and trim the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna lift it from the pegs. And what it's saying is that I should trim here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut them open first. And then it says trim them. So let's hold it sideways because it shows in the picture holding it sideways and trimming. So let's do that. Now this looks like what they did. Okay, the only thing I think I would do different next time is I would go ahead and put a string at the top as well. While it's on here, I would go ahead and put a string through here so I would have a way to hang it. But I mean, that's a tassel. It just needs the top held together so you could hang it. That would be easy to make a bunch of tassels if you want to do a yarn, um, like a, a little kind of vintage looking tassel for your mantle, that'd be really cute. So there's your tassel maker, super easy. Now we're on to the bow maker. So here's what it says. Position two pegs on the board. The distance between the peg will determine the size of the bow. So let's make a bow about like that, okay? Um, so I've got three spots between it. This says cross ends over at front. So put the ribbon behind the pegs and cross them over at the front like so. I'm gonna try to get it like it shows them there, okay? Then it says, take ribbon on the left hand and wrap under the loop through the middle. All right, so I need to trim this ribbon down because I still have it on my spool, so let me trim it. Okay, so take the ribbon at the left hand, so this is my left hand, and we're gonna cross it under all of it. That's what it's showing me, okay? Then it says, wrap under the loop through the middle of the pegs and pull tight. But it shows it coming this way, okay? 
So is that pull tight? I think it might be. Then it says, take both ends of the ribbons and tie a knot. Are you kidding? That's pretty easy right there. So then you, look at that bow, you guys. You card makers are gonna love this. <laughs> then it says, pull tight at the front, remove the bow and adjust as needed. So pull tight, okay, remove, and then adjust as needed. You guys, that is beautiful. That was easy and beautiful. Now you've seen bow makers like this before. There's peg makers out there and things like that, but that made quick work. I wanna do another one. <laughs> I wanna do a small one for card making. So I'm gonna move my pegs even closer together and I'm gonna use some of this cream ribbon that I've got and see how small we can make one. Not how small, but see if it works for small as well. So you cross these guys over like so, okay? Then you take this one and go under and bring it around. Put that in the middle there and then tie a knot. Oh yeah, this is awesome. My mom would love this. This is great. Then just adjust as needed. And look at that little bow. That's really cool. I cut way too much ribbon, which is my habit to do anyway. Look at that tiny bow. Let me tell you something. I could have used this when we were making uh, Samantha's wedding invitations because <laughs> we made a lot of tiny bows. That's so cool. All right, thumbs up on the bow maker. Love it. That was great. Now, when you put these back in, I don't know if this is the case, but I'm going to caution you because I want you to see how far these go in. You see that goes all the way down. If you don't put them in while they're connected, I'm afraid, of course, I guess it wouldn't matter. It's not going to go very far. No, you'd be fine because you could still access it here. So then you just do them like, okay, we're good. We don't have to worry about that too much. You could put them in there one at a time to be fine. All right, so we tested that. The only thing we haven't tested is the banner. Let's try it. So here's the banner instructions. Let's check it out. So this one says, select your banner size and trim the paper, trim your paper to the correct size. So banner chart. So let's just do a three inch. That's the small one. So for three inch, I need a three by three inch piece of paper. So let's make this piece three by three inches. Put that in the center of the score. Y'all, that blade could be because it's brand new, but it sure does slice like butter. I like that. Okay, so there's that. Now, the next thing I need to do is to line this up. So here's my banner arrow. Okay, let me get this where you can see it. And there's the banner word on the board. So this time it goes in at an angle. Um, the magnets are helping to hold it. I'm kind of pushing against those magnets, so that's good. Now it says, I'm gonna bring this where you can see it. See this, we're working down here. We're kind of working in the middle. So for this, it says, align the edge of paper to alignment guide um, measurement from the chart and trim. Let me read that again. Align left edge of paper to the alignment guide measurement from the chart and trim. So if I'm doing a three, three inch one, my alignment guide measurement is one and a half, no, one and an eighth. So I'm gonna open this up. And so I'm gonna align this at one and an eighth. Let me do this end. Okay. So now what do I do? Let's read it. So there's one and an eighth. Then it says, and trim. Okay, so boom, trimmed that away. Then it says, flip the paper, align the same measurement and repeat. So one and one eighth, line that one and repeat. And look at there. Then it says, <laughs> um, align the right banner edge with the right side banner line on the hole punch. Okay. So the right banner edge, let's find the hole punch here. Oh, look, okay. Let me bring that up where you can see it. See that right there? The banners, that's what you're lining up. So your banner will go in there and you'll line it up on that angle to punch. Isn't that cool? I like this. I like the banner situation. You can make fast banners. So there, flip it over. Same lineup. Actually, you could bring it this way and line it up. Or I'll just do the same lineup. Look at that. That's cool, y'all. The banner, okay. I like the banner thing a lot. Okay. So I got straight in to trying this thing out without knowing anything about it. Now that I've gone through and I've tried everything else, I want to go back and give stamping another try. I want to make sure I did everything I could to make it work like it's supposed to. Okay. 
So what I think I'll do is I think I'll make an actual card front and stamp it so you can see what it would be like if we were actually stamping or maybe a tag. That's what we'll do. We'll make a tag. Since I cut this tag out, let's use it to design. Okay. So for the stamping tool, the first thing we need to do is we need to bring this guy out and flip it to where our little guideline is facing up. Okay. We still can close that down. It's perfectly fine to close our trimmer and doesn't hurt a thing. Now my tag needs to live over here for me to stamp it. That way I can get it nice and straight. Let me get my magnet. The cool thing is you might think you have to flip this over to get your magnets. You don't. You can just lift it up and reach your hand in there and here's your magnets. That's super easy. So let's put some magnets to hold that guy in place. All right, let's get our platform. And now let's decide what we want to stamp on our tag. So I'm going to use one of my favorite stamp sets and it's this one called Christmas Insta Wreath. I love it. And it'll help us to use several um, different stamps for this one project. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is the green part of my wreath. So this is the kind of pine forest, the pine boughs or bows part of the wreath. So I'm gonna put that there and then I'm gonna pick it up with my platform. I love the magnets, I love the magnets. I love how easy that is, I love all of that. It's so good, all right? And then I'm gonna pick the color. I think I'll use a green, so I'm gonna sit that there. I'm gonna use this rainforest green from Versafine. It's the Versafine Claire, it's really pretty green. So I got that good and inked up. Now, bring this guy back over so you can see it good. I'm gonna place this down. I'm not even stressing because I've already placed it where it needs to go. And now I'm just gonna stamp. I'm gonna run my hand around it and make sure I get that really well. That looks great. Nice and stamped, nice and even. Looks good. I'll even zoom you guys in so you might even see it a little better. All right, now let's get the second layer of this set. Now this layer, I twist until I see it line up like I want it to. And that feels about right. So I'm gonna leave that one right there and pick it up with my platform. Okay, stamp that down, pick that up. Make sure this guy's where he's supposed to be. And I'm gonna ink it up with some Glamorous from Versaclair. All right, and now we're just gonna trust it again. We already lined it all up. Let's mag it into place, stamp that down. Look beautiful, looks great, right? Let's do the last layer of this one. So the last layer is some pine cones. And I love to use a positioner with this one because it lets me place these right where I want them to show. And it's really cool to be able to place it like this. There we go, let's pick it up. And I wanna make sure this is where it's supposed to be. And I'm gonna use brown on that one. Let's use fallen leaves. All right, stick that down. This is working perfectly, okay? Granted, when I did it the first time, I went right to the middle with a big, bold image. I pushed it to its limits. This is working great. Let's do another part of this stamp set. Let's put in the middle, Christmas begins with Christ. So I'm going to put that right there. And I'll pick that up with my platform. Okay. And then ink it with some onyx black. So put this back. Lay that in. Let's see how it does. That's perfect. That is beautiful. I'm not sad about those results at all. So maybe it's where I place it on the board. Maybe you should stay up in this area. Actually, maybe we stamp over here more than we would stamp over here anyway. It could be that. Let's keep going. I want to add, I have an idea. Let's see if I can do it. So I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. This little stamp right here is the Buffalo Check filler piece from our stamp set called Wheelie Full Wagon. I think it'd be cool to put Buffalo Check on the end of this, um, on the end of this tag. So I'm gonna place this where I want it. Let me look in the camera, make sure I've got it where I want it. And I'm gonna do a little border with it. Actually, I think I'll come back this way. Now I'm trying to look in the camera to line this up. <laughs> Let me get a pencil with an eraser. Hang on one second. This is one of my tips. If they stick to you, use a pencil with an eraser and they typically won't stick to that. Okay, so let's do that and let's pick that up. Oh, let's magnet this guy down, especially considering that I did not um, put this in that top corner because I'm wanting to stamp off a little bit. So let's see if we can do that to hold it in place. Let's pick up our stamp. There we go. Okay, so what I want to do is slide something under here because I'm going to be inking off a little bit and I don't want it to get dirty. So this is just some of the scraps from making the banner. I'm just gonna put that there to catch the excess ink. And now we will ink up our little buffalo, buffalo check, buffalo, whatever that is, our little buffalo check piece. 
put it with our magnets and then stamp it. Now what I wanna do is I wanna place the stamp here. So I'm gonna clean the stamp and pick it up. Now that I've cleaned it, I'm going to attempt to match it up. Now I'm not getting my head over camera. It's probably not gonna be a perfect match, but it might be close. <laughs> but this is what I wanted to see. Could we do this kind of thing? All right, so let's put this down, pick that up. My magnets are still good. I'm gonna slide this down to catch any excess ink. Let's go ahead and ink this up. And then place this guy down and stamp. So I did not line it up well, but you can see how it's working. If I had got my head over the camera, I would have, or in the camera's way, you would have been able to see that do even better, but it is working. The stamp is stamping well. It's not skipping. It's not creating lines. That's where I overlapped a little too much, but it's not bad. You know, I think it, I think it's working. It was probably me. Let's stamp the back. This time, <laughs> I won't put it out here in the middle, like so, kind of where we started. Put it in the middle, put my little magnets down, and let's do happy birthday, Jesus. Let's do it right in the middle, right where we stamped the first time. You know, right where we did with that solid image stamp. Pick that up, ink it up. It's perfect. It worked great. All right, I'm gonna go back to my solid image and see if I do better this time with the solid image. All right, I'm gonna put this here, I'll magnet it down, okay. I'm gonna place my stamp like so. I'm gonna pick it up with my positioner. And again, I like to do this just because, I wanna make sure there's no big air bubbles, okay? And let's ink this up. Again with the black, I wanna test the same thing. Maybe it was me, maybe it's the way I had the board on my table, who knows? I'm not above saying it might be me. Okay, that time I didn't get ink everywhere, so let me ink it up good. I missed a spot. There we go. Okay, well, let's try it. It just doesn't want to get the middle of that flower. Okay, let's do this. Let's put it up here. Let's magnet that down. Let's pick it up there. Let's see if it's the placement. So I'm gonna pick it up. Actually, let me press right there. See, that worked. I think if you're using the lower part, you're gonna struggle. But you can see right here, it stamped just fine up there. So if, if you're doing your solid images, you wanna keep them at the top. And I really think that has to do with just getting a good flat surface behind it. Now you might consider, you might consider maybe adding another piece of cardstock under what you're doing to maybe bring it up a little bit or make it a little flatter. Um, there's really not space for foam. You might could get a really, really thin piece of maybe some fun foam or something if you wanted to try that. Um, let me try it. I've got some. Let's try some fun foam. So this is the foam we use in our classroom on our plastic tables. A lot of times those plastic tables that fold in the middle aren't very sturdy. So this is what we use there. So I'm going to place this down. Now the first thing I want to know is do my magnets work through it? Pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's see. I mean, it's still sticking, so I think we'll be all right, especially if I push it into the corner. All right, this is the same cardstock I've been using the whole time, so I'm gonna put that there. Place the magnets down to hold it in place. Let's put our stamp on. So I cleaned the stamp off. I'm gonna place it where I want it. That's about where we were before. Let's see if we can pick it up. Okay, pick that guy up. Now let's ink it. Okay, I feel like I'm good encoded there. You can see how wet that, there you go. There's a good image of the wetness of that ink. Okay, let's see what you can do, foam. <laughs> let's see if you help. Look at there, yay. <laughs> yay, I feel so good about that, finally. All right, so this is not a problem. This little piece of fun foam is not an issue. We probably all have this in our stash. If you're using these solid color images like this, I would suggest use the fun foam. The important thing for you to know is I filmed these videos taking these straight out of the box so I have not played with them before we see the video. Now I feel much better. Made it work. I told you I wanted it to work because I want to enjoy this tool so much. I love how it did the tag. I had no issue and didn't need any foam for any of that. Just know if you have a stamp that won't stamp solid for you, especially in the center of your board, you might want to keep a little foam with you. 
All right, let's do a complete look at the whole board. So first, let me say this, the works tool, does 10 different things that are listed here, which I think we could find all kinds of things we could do with it outside of that, but at least 10 things to start with, right? We tested them all today, and with the exception of two things, those are the only things I was worried about, two little things, and we'll talk about it as we go. I love that it's all compact and together, okay? I love the quality of the build. I'm surprised by that, not because of We Are. I love what We Are makes, but anytime you put this um, score grid and you have it kind of thin like this. This is very thin. Do you see how it's kind of um, gone up? It goes inside. It's real thin. A lot of times that makes your platform weak. I think that's what causes us the problem with the stamping. Like I can feel it giving when I press, like going away from me. So I wonder if pressing with a stamp like this makes the center kind of dig in a little bit, but I'm surprised at how sturdy it feels. You guys will remember that one of the things I didn't like about the last tool they had that opened up, you, you may know which one that one is, but I didn't love about it was it opened up and scored in one of the most, um, in one of the places we needed to score the most, which is like four and a quarter. It might've been five and a half, but there was one spot that the seam was actually on one of our most popular score marks. And I didn't love that. I also didn't love how weak it got when you opened it. This one doesn't do that. Okay. I like the blade. I'm very happy with the blade. It cuts well, it's very sharp. I'm okay with this arm. You know that's what I love about my current trimmer is how thick and sturdy this arm is. I do love that. This piece, it's not bad. There are gonna be some things that you have to do to make this guy work. It is, you know, 10 in one tool, right? I guess it's 10 in one. They don't say that, but it's a lot, it's a lot in one. So you do have to move some things. Another cool thing though is if you're ever cropping, and you have um, this with you at a crop and you need a straight edge, this is perfect for maybe, uh, you know, making a trace mark or helping you to fold something or it's nice to have that straight edge. So that can go in there just like that. I like it. I do like how easy to see the cut line is. That's really nice for when you're doing diagonal cuts. This guy right here, love. This is well done. I love this piece. I love the magnets. I love these little, um, these little feet and how easy they are to squish. I say that because if you have um, some of the positioners that have the rubber feet, sometimes they can be a little too hard, but I really like how that's on a spring and makes that super easy. That was well thought out. I like the black lines. <laughs> I know you guys will too. We struggle being able to see these sometimes on our scoreboards and our trimmers. The black lines are really nice. The one place I wish it had black lines is down here on these little guides and things. But if you get up really close, you can see those. And in one of my tips I showed you, if you zoom in, you can see those as well, like with your phone, so you can see what you're looking for. Um, so that, I love that it, re I love it resist when I have it wrong. It's easy for me to know that I have it wrong. I really do like that. Um, I'm okay with the arm. It's not my favorite arm. It's a little, um, it's a little loose, but I can get by with it. One thing I don't love, and I know this is so that um, it doesn't fly open constantly. I don't love the resistance I get every time I close it, but I understand the need for it because I would probably like it less if it flopped open every time I try to pick it up or whatever. Like if I turn this sideways, it doesn't flop. Now this falls off, but that's from weight, but it doesn't fly open and I do like that. So, what else do I like? I like the arm. I think this guy's great. I love that it sits nice and flat on the surface. It's got yarn all in it. <laughs> it sits nice and flat on the surface. Let me turn this up and see if you can see what I'm talking about. You see how the thickness does not change. It stays the same thickness here. So that means it lays nice and flat on your work surface. That's fantastic. I like the storage on the tool as well. I'm gonna take that off so I'm not slinging it everywhere. I like the storage back here. I like the way this little guy has one little home, okay? I love these. I want these in everyday life. I want y'all to, we are, sell me these. <laughs> Let me buy these guys. I love these. I love that they come already packaged like that so you don't have to put washi tape or anything on them. And I also love that they um, store right back here in the back. That was interesting how those just stuck together. How did those stick together? That's interesting. Okay, I love that they stick right there. As always, their tool storage is great. We always know that. They always know how to keep their, their storage, you know, their on-bed storage so good. And I'm pretty happy with it. I'm surprised. I'm surprised how happy I am with this construction. This surprise, I was expecting this to be a lot more flop, not floppy, that's not really a good word. I was, I was expecting this to be a lot more 
uh, flexible and it seems to be a little sturdier. One thing that I, I will caution you about though is not having a full 12 by 12 inch scoreboard. So even though um, this is kind of an all-in-one tool, you will need your bigger scoreboard if you're doing anything 12 by, well, actually six, um, six inches or bigger. Perfect tool for a crop. If you want to save space in your crop, in your crop bag, it's a good tool for a crop. I don't think you'd hate it. Um, I think all the cut lines are in good spots. Oh, it even has um, centimeters. Or is that millimeters? Centimeters. Yeah. I give it, <laughs> I give it a B. I give it a B. I would give it an A plus if this did exactly what I wanted it to. I would give it an absolute A plus. I give it a B. So if I give it a B, that means you have to decide, is it worth it to me to spend the money to have this all in one tool versus all the other tools? Um, and I say where punch boards are concerned, yes, because you are you can easily replace and easily use three different punch boards easy. The only thing that, um, and you probably will see them correct this, I don't know, I'm speaking at a turn, not having an A2 um, envelope maker might be an issue for you. If you're a six by six card maker or a five by seven card maker, let me check. Yeah, five by seven is there, six by six is there, and if, I'm, if you have one of these tools and I'm overlooking the A2, please tell me because I do not see it. I do feel like it was a typo. And if that's the case, they'll probably just send out a, ma um, a magnet, a sticker. Sometimes they'll let you get a sticker to kind of fix that and replace it. I don't know if that's the case. I'm speaking off the top of my head. I do not know. So um, there you go, guys. That is the um, works tool from We Are Memory Keepers. We have very few of these in stock. I wanted to test it. I wanted to see if I loved it. Um, I think we got less than 20 because I didn't know, and they're not super, super, super affordable, but considering all the tools you're replacing, it's very affordable. So I don't have a whole bunch in stock, but if you want them, I will have them linked in the description below. And as usual, we'll have a little sale price on them for you guys on our first set of orders. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.